if you are a fan of kimchi and dumplings, you are going to love today's recipe. I'm gonna show you how to make these overstuffed kimchi dumplings with these sweet potato starch noodles called tangmyeon. Yes, these are the noodles for japchae that everyone loves. So kimchi and tangmyeon noodles together, it is a perfect marriage made in heaven and it's the tastiest dumplings in my opinion. Just amazing, amazing and amazing. Now make sure to watch to the end because I'm gonna show you how to properly freeze your homemade kimchi dumplings so that you could have it every time you crave kimchi dumplings. So good. 오늘의 레시피 만두 전분집처럼 촉촉하고 아주 맛있는 김치 만두 만들기. 오늘도 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. The ingredient list is also available in the description box below. For our kimchi mandu dumpling stuffing, we need about 150 gram-ish of these sweet potato starch noodles called tangmyeon. Place them in a big baking pan like that. So we need about three cups of hot water and then we're just gonna pour it in here. So we need about three cups of cold water and we're gonna pour this cold water to our tangmyeon noodles with the hot water in it. Make sure to press it down. Now notice how these guys are sticking out on top. What I want you to do is then take a plate and make sure to put it on top so the noodles are fully submerged in water. And we're gonna let this soak for about a good 15 to 20 minutes. Now for our meat stuffing, we need about 320 gram-ish of ground pork, and that's about three quarter pound. And for my vegan friends, just use plant-based ground beef. But let me tell you, kimchi and pork, they rule together. It's such a great combination. Put it in a big bowl. And to this, we're gonna add two big pitches of salt. And here is my extra fermented kimchi. So this one's about like six months old and we call that shin kimchi. And look at this delicious extra fermented kimchi juice. Oh, look at that. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of your extra fermented kimchi juice. And to this, we're gonna add one tablespoon of all-purpose Korean soy sauce, yangjo ganjang. Then one tablespoon of minced garlic. Then I want you to mix everything up. Then once you mix everything up, then pat it down like that. And then I want you to leave this to the side while we get the rest of our ingredients ready. And our star ingredient, extra fermented kimchi, shin kimchi. So we need about two cups. What I want you to do is just squeeze out a little bit of the juice. You don't have to be overly aggressive. A little bit of the liquid is fine two cups of extra fermented kimchi. Then put our kimchi in a big mixing bowl. I want you to take a pair of kitchen shears and basically start chopping. You could chop this on your cutting board and give yourself a big project of cleaning up your kimchi juice and stain on your cutting board, or you could chop it in a bowl like this with kitchen shears. And then these root end pieces, make sure to chop them really well. And it is also important to not overly chop your kimchi because you want it to have a bite. So make sure it looks like this, roughly chopped shin kimchi. And then a little bit of kimchi liquid is good because this is gonna keep our dumplings nice and moist. And also of course flavor it too. And we need a half a block, about eight ounces of extra firm tofu. And I want you to cut it down the middle. Using a cheesecloth, we're gonna put our half a block of extra firm tofu right here in the middle. Pick it up and wrap it. And then I would just want you to squeeze to remove the excess liquid about good six, eight times, like so, so that it looks like this. And then put it in our kimchi bowl. We need three green onions, scallions, finely minced. And we need about six to eight sprigs of garlic chives, 
called puchu in Korean. If you can't get this, just add more green scallions instead. Cut the root end off and discard. So that is about half a cup of finely minced garlic chives. And we need half of a small onion, finely minced. So this yields to about less than half a cup of finely minced onion. It's been 10 minutes and let's just check. And we just want to soak it long enough so that you could pick it up with your hands and your noodles are bendy, no longer stiff like before. That's it. Put it in a strainer like that. Pick up about half of the noodles. It's easier to chop them in small sections and lay it down on your cutting board like this. And then just start chopping. Then mix everything up together and give it a, one more chop. Then we're going to add two big pinches of salt, one tablespoon of gesogum, this is crushed sesame seed salt, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and here I have finely ground Korean red pepper flakes called goon gochugaru. If you don't have the fine ground, you could also use just coarse ground gochugaru as well. And we need two tablespoons of goon gochugaru. And if you don't like it super spicy, you could add less or just not add any of it at all. And two tablespoons of your finest sesame oil, chamgirim. Now this is optional, but I'm gonna add one tablespoon of sogogi dashita. So this is your Korean beef bouillon powder. Vegan friends use yandu, which is plant-based flavor enhancer. Or you could also just add a quarter teaspoon of MSG, Mi1. Now this is my secret ingredient to making delicious mandu stuffing. This is Korean breadcrumbs called pankaru. Here in the States, it's also called panko, but panko is basically Japanese. So we need about half a cup of pankaru, and we need one egg to bind everything together. Now, vegan friends, you could just use one tablespoon of cornstarch or potato starch instead. Then you just have to go in with your hands and mix everything up. So mix everything up until it looks like this. Look at that. Oh, wow. This all wrapped up in our dumpling wrapper and into your mouth. <gasps> it smells so good already. <laughs> it smells so good and we didn't even cook it. Oh my goodness, like the kimchi is perfuming my entire kitchen. And then the sesame oil and the garlicky smell is, I just drooled in my own mouth. Let's have a quick taste test. Mm, delicious. Oh, wow. We're now going to add the pork that we marinated earlier into our bowl. Once the stuffing is ready, you need to start making your dumpling wraps right away. This is not something you want to make in advance and let it sit in the fridge or anywhere else because the natural juices from all of our vegetables will start releasing. Then our stuffing will get soggy and that is a no-no. Now, when it comes to your dumpling wrappers, mandupi, I highly recommend getting Korean dumpling wrappers, these king size ones, and it's called chapsal wang mandupi. And basically it's made using sweet glutinous rice flour and regular flour so it comes out extra soft and chewy and so delicious. Now for my friends that do not live near a Korean market, you can make these at home and I have a recipe on how to make homemade dumpling wrappers that you could check out. And I love these Korean ones more also because it's so moist and it's so much easier to shape your dumplings using chapsal mandupi. Now this top layer, it's cornstarch, so I always take it off and put it on the bottom of the pile like so. Another tip that's very important is when you're shaping your dumplings, Dumplings, always keep your dumpling wrappers covered in a plastic wrap as you are working because we want to make sure that these guys don't dry out. Here I have a little bit of cold water that we're going to use to seal our dumpling wrappers. You want to take your dumpling wrapper, take a little bit of the stuffing, and how much depends on the size that you're using. Make sure you shape the stuffing into a shape of an oval shape like that and kind of press it down and make it compact. Dip your finger like so, and then put the water 
on one side of your dumpling wrapper like that. Then you want to seal it like that. Press, press. So your thumb and index finger will be working most of the time. And the most important part of making dumplings is the seal. The shape doesn't really matter because the stuffing is what's going to make your dumplings taste delicious. So you want to seal it until there's no more pockets of air inside the stuffing. So you could leave it as is, enjoy it this way, or you could put a little bit of water here at this tip end and then bring your dumplings together like that. Take this end and then put it on this side and then you just squeeze. Then you have yourself this beautiful shape. Isn't this so pretty? And it was easy peasy. All right, so let's do another one together. Now, I have a separate video on 16 different dumpling shapes that you could try at home if you wanna make different shapes. After you wrap your dumplings, you literally have 10 minutes to either cook your dumplings or freeze them. Because if you let your dumplings sit at room temperature for more than 10 minutes, the juices from our stuffing will start breaking down the wrapper and then you'll have very sad busted wide open dumpling wrappers. We don't want that. Let's get these guys in the steamer and then the rest will freeze them. Today I'm using a pressure cooker pot but you could use a regular pot as well. What's important is make sure to leave about one inch of space between the water level and where the steamer basket will be resting. That is very, very important. Set your heat to high and wait for the water to start boiling. I'm lining my steamer basket with some lettuce leaves to protect my dumplings from sticking. Make sure to not overcrowd your steamer basket. All the dumplings must not be touching each other. So once the water comes to boil like so, then we're going to place our mandu basket, then place our lid, lock it, and wait for the pressure to build at maximum on high heat. Now once the pressure reaches its maximum level like so, then I want you to lower your heat to low like that. And then we're going to let this continue steaming for five minutes. Now, if you're using a regular pot, I want you to continue steaming at high heat with the lid on for eight minutes. It's been five minutes, so we're gonna turn off our heat completely, and then we're gonna slowly start releasing our pressure. So our steam has completely released, so let's unlock completely, and let's take a look. <gasps> look at that. <laughs> our kimchi mandu is saying, oh. <laughs> now, if you're using a regular pot, once you turn off the heat, I want you to let the steamed dumpling sit with the lid on for two minutes with no heat on. I want you to place it on your kitchen counter and let it cool down for five minutes. So while our steamed dumplings are cooling down, I'm gonna show you how to make a quick and fast dipping sauce for our kimchi mandu. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of cold water. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of all-purpose Korean soy sauce, yangjo hanjang. Then we're gonna add half a tablespoon of apple vinegar or you could use brown rice vinegar or any distilled white vinegar will do. Then we're gonna add just a tiny drizzle of sesame oil, just a little bit, like so. And then we're just gonna add just a little bit of minced scallions and just a little bit of gesogum. So this is crushed sesame seed salt, like that. And this is done. So when it comes to freezing your dumplings, Make sure to line your tray with some plastic saran wrap and lay your dumplings like so. I want you to make sure that there's space in between the rows of dumplings like so. Then we're gonna loosely cover with more plastic wrap on top. Then place the tray in the freezer and I want you to continue making the rest of your dumplings. So this recipe makes about four dozen dumplings. Bring out the tray of the frozen dumplings that we added earlier, and you just wanna lay them. Right here is the empty lane. So you just wanna lay them right there in between them right here, like so. Then put more plastic wrap on top. 
then tuck your saran wrap underneath your tray. Then we have three empty lanes here on top. So that's how you want to stack your dumplings so that you create space in between and also that they don't stick together. And just keep on going. Then add our last layer on top. Look how great they look. Add our final layer of saran wrap on top like so. And for added protection, I will put another layer of plastic wrap on top. And tuck like that. And in goes into the freezer for 24 hours. And 24 hours later, look at that. All right, so we're gonna take this out. So I want you to drop your tray so it unsticks any of the stuck on frozen dumplings. Pick one up and it should be hard as a rock. So I portion them to six per bag like so. Then double bag in a freezer safe bag. Place them back in the freezer and make sure to eat it within a month. When you're steaming your frozen dumplings, you do not need to thaw them out. It goes right into the steamer basket. Okay, so this is how you steam frozen dumplings. Make sure to bring your steaming water to boiling like so. Then after you add the steamer basket with the dumplings, place the lid and I want you to steam on high heat for 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, I want you to turn off the heat completely and let your steamed dumplings rest with the lid on for five minutes. Now, if using a pressure cooker, once the pressure reaches its maximum level, like so, then what you wanna do is turn down the heat to low and let it steam away for eight minutes. Eight minutes later, you wanna turn off the heat completely and let it rest like this for two minutes. Then two minutes later, you wanna slowly start releasing the pressure from your pressure cooker. Ha, it's kimchi mandu time. <laughs> that was my kimchi dumpling dance, everyone. This has cooled down enough so that I could pick up with my hands and this is something I always, always do when I eat these king size kimchi mandu. With clean hands, of course, you have to break it in half like that. Oh, look at that. Look at the stuffing. It's glorious. Oh my goodness. This brings me back to my childhood. There was smell of vision I mean, I would say, come here and sniff this. Oh my goodness. Bon appetit, everyone. Mm. It literally just melts in my mouth. I don't know if I love this more or the regular dumplings. Oh, they're both so good, but probably this one more. So good. <laughs> then you must take your dumpling and dip it in this dipping sauce that we just made. You have to have it together. Mmm. Mmm. This dipping sauce that we made is just slightly salty, but it's tangy and it's so refreshing. So when you dip your kimchi mandu in, in this dipping sauce, speechless, it's just another level. Kimchi mandu just made my day so much better. <laughs> So make this at home and enjoy it with your friends and family. Now, if you want to check out my other dumpling mandu recipes, make sure to go to youtube.com slash modern pepper, click on that playlist tab and select Korean dumplings mandu recipe playlist. And I will see you there. I want to thank you for watching today. And if you enjoyed watching today's video, I want to kindly, kindly ask you to click on that thumbs up icon and subscribe if you haven't done so and make sure to hit that notification bell. 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼과 구독 버튼도 눌러 주세요. 다음 영상에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. 감사합니다. All right folks, I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.